Hi guys, thanks for joining me. Now today I'm going to upload two videos. I'm going to upload one showing you how to design a buffalo check or a buffalo plaid pattern in Inkscape. And I plan to use this for heat transfer vinyl. And then I'll upload another one that shows you how to do the same thing in Cricut Design Space. Watch whatever's helpful for you and your projects. Now I'm going to start with Inkscape. So I'll go ahead and open Inkscape. And then make my screen larger by hitting the shift button and hitting the plus sign. Then I'm going to start with some two inch squares. So I click on create rectangles and squares. And I'll just drag a square. <laughs> I don't want it to be green. Let's go with black. Now I'm going to select it so I can change the size. And I want the height and the width to be two inches. First, let's change millimeter to inches. And then it's unlocked, which it needs to be because right now the width and the height are two different sizes. So I'll just click on 2.0 for that. And then my height 2.0 as well. Now I'm going to hit Command C, Command V so I can paste one. And then Command C, Command V one more time. And I'm going to have this be almost white. It'll be gray so I can see where it is. Actually, let's make it a little bit darker. Okay. So the snapping is enabled. That's going to be a problem for a while, but then I'm going to want to turn it back on. And I'll show you why in just a little bit. So on the buffalo plaid or buffalo check, usually there's a solid color. And then beside it and below it, there's a semi-solid or a color tone that's between this darkness and this darkness. And I'm going to use this square to come up with these two right here. So to do that, I'm going to click on this Create Rectangles and Squares and make just a skinny rectangle. Now I want this to be 0.2 inches. So let's go select it. And then for my height, I'm going to change that to 0.2. And I'm going to go ahead and change it to a color that's a lot easier to see. So I'm going to hit Command Copy or Command C for Copy. And then I'm going to paste 8 on here. So Command V 8 times. Now you can't see them all. They're all stacked up. But I'll just start dragging them down and putting them kind of where I want them. Okay, I thought I disabled that. Let's disable snapping. And I don't care that these aren't perfect because I'm going to fix them with the Align and Distribute tool. So we're just going to drag them down here. I think I should be about done. Okay. Then I'll go ahead and drag my cursor around all of those. Whoops. Let's go back where we were. Now they're all selected, so I'll click on Align and Distribute. I want to center them, and then I want to use this Distribute right here so that there's equal white spacing between. Okay, and that looks pretty good. Sometimes I don't get enough white space, so I just drag the bottom one down and then redistribute them, and that fixes it, but I like that right there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and select all of them, and I'll go ahead and hit Path and Union. Now it's just one object. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to rotate these 45 degrees. So I'll click on Object, Transform, and then right here I'm going to click on Rotate. And I want to go 45 degrees. So I put in 45 and then click Apply. Now this would work, but for some reason I like them to go the other direction. So I'm just going to click Apply two more times. And now they're facing the way I want them. I could have flipped them horizontally as well. But for me, I was already in that screen, so it worked easier just to do it that way. Now I'm going to place them where I think they look good. Also, I have learned that with this being black and the remaining stripes are going to be black, that if you have black in the corners, it's helpful. So we'll select both of those items. You can see the square is selected also. There's the dotted lines around it. And I'll go to Path and Difference. 
except for I don't have the black in the corners. Let's go back. That's because my red is cutting away from the black. So now if I do it like this, I think I'm going to have what I want. So again, I'll select both items, click on path and difference. There we go. That's what I wanted. Now I'm going to go ahead and make another one of those. So Command C for copy, Command V for paste. Okay, so this should look about like your basic buffalo check. We'll turn that white. And it doesn't look great now. You just wait. It's going to look awesome. Make that a little darker. Okay, now what I want to do is move those together so that they're just barely touching so that I can weld or union them together. Now, when I try to move it over and get it just perfect, I don't really know exactly when it touched because they're both black. You can't really tell. Maybe I'm exactly where I need to be, but I can see a little white in between there. So for the only thing uh, so far that I found this is good for, I'm going to enable the snapping and then watch. It's magic. It just sucks it right up to it. I'll do the same thing here. There it did. It just sucked it right up there to it. So I have the start of my shape. I'm going to go ahead and select all four items and then Command C, Command V, and then I'll just set this one right beside it and then circle everything again, Command C, Command V. Put it right by it. Now that's wide enough. So then let's just select all of those. Command C, Command V. Drag it right below. And then one more time, select everything. Copy and paste. Okay, let's make it smaller so you can see the whole thing. Now, if I were to weld all this together right now, those gray squares, I believe, will turn black. Let's see. Union. Yes, so we don't want to do that. So I need to go back. I'm just going to select all of them. I have my shift held down, and then I'm just clicking on each one. Now, if you did something between steps, you need to make sure this is lit up to be able to do this. And then I'm just going to delete them all at once. Now I can go back, select them all, path, and union. And there's my buffalo check pattern. Now if you want to see what that's going to look like on your background, let's say I'm putting it on a red shirt. Then let's make a square, or just a shape to put behind it, that's red. So I can select the red. Go up to object and say lower, meaning put it under the buffalo check, and there you go. And this is really kind of neat because you can, let's just select this kind of yellow background. That's pretty. Let's change the main color of brown or a maroonish color. Ooh, purple, I guess. It's not maroon. Here's maroon. There we go. You can really see what your end project is going to look like by using this. But for now, I'm just going to get rid of the yellow and change my buffalo check back to black. So that's all there is to it. That's my Inkscape version. If you're interested, I also have the Cricut Design Space version out there. Go look at it also. But in the meantime, thanks for joining me. I really appreciate it. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time.